Hello! Welcome to the stream. Andrew is not with us for the beginning here. He's watching another stream. But when that's over, he'll call in and we'll have the usual crew here with us. So, in the meantime, I'm just going to get uh, some busy work done here in Banjo Tui. We are, I think, two or three, two jiggies away from uh, unlocking the final world prior to the boss fight. So, I'm going to go to. Hailfire Peaks, which is the most recent world I've unlocked, and I will try and get as many as I can. I know how to get at least a couple, so we'll see how that goes. Let me actually... I want the foot, the foot of the mic stand getting in the, uh, in the way of my chair. That'll be a pain in the ass if that happens. But, uh, generally I'm okay with that. Alright. Turn it up so I can hear the game. There we go. Let's go! Yeah, I'm not necessarily 100 percent this. I will probably go back and tie up some loose ends, get as much of it done as I can prior to the final boss fight, but for the time being, I am just trying to get to the end. This is a pretty long game. You might have seen I had the um had the other save file where I did practically 100% it. There was one jiggy I or not even a jiggy one Cheeto page I had not gotten um that whew, yeah we'll we'll talk about that later. But that took about 24 hours I believe. So not too bad, but also also took a minute. Let's see here. Oh, watch out. I'm gonna go over here and do the kickball tournament, which is not too difficult. It's just a mini game, which I'm pretty decent at the mini games. I've been doing them for a long time. But uh, yeah, I just gotta figure out how to get to the uh, get transformation, which I gotta find a way to Mayhem Temple. And then from there, moving on. Whoop! Because you gotta turn into the stony. And then you gotta go from being the stony to being the, uh, to being in here. That might be it. I think you gotta break this rock. Yeah? Nope. Nothing doing. Uh, maybe along here? genuinely cannot see a damn thing. Ah, let me actually... Mm. It's ugly, but it's visible. Got it, got it turned up enough to be visible. 
And uh, as I've told Andrew earlier, and I'll say now, uh, I'm not going to have quite as long a stream as yesterday. Yesterday's stream, I did not plan it for it to be too long, which I, um, I did accidentally have a little bit of behind the scenes because I forgot to cut the mics. Uh, at the very end of yesterday's stream, but yeah, I, uh, I I planned to cut that one way earlier, maybe three hours. But every time I checked it, I was like, oh, I have I have like another viewer who just came on, so I'll wait a little bit, and then by the time it felt like a good time again, that would keep happening, and then I got the raid, which I was I was happy for. It definitely gave me a decent um, decent average viewer for that stream, but. It was frustrating. Damn. I don't remember where I'm to go to do this. Might be from outside. Even from the cold side. Thinking about it. Hmm. No, I already did that. That's the Jinjo. Um, maybe it's out front of the entrance out here? Yeah, it's been a minute since I played this game. And this one is uh, a lot more expansive. Like, a lot more expansive than the first game. So while there's the same amount of stuff to get, really, it's just so much more of a pain to get all of it. I open that up? I don't recall. Well, okay. Maybe I'll go to the ice side and see what's up over there. I know if I, uh... Get, uh... If I kill Chili Billy, the ice dragon, because I already did the fire dragon last time, I should be able to get a jiggy for that, so that'd be cool. Uh, well, upper area. That's something. And shit. know that there is a jam jars over here, but I don't remember which jam jars it is. Um, it's definitely one of the ones that is for only Banjo or Kazooie. I gotta track down. I gotta figure out which it is and then come back with the particular character. That's it. Just the, just the eggs. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> um, that's how you open up the train station. Oh, I hadn't done that yet. So that's good to know. I still got Gobi there, so I don't know. I don't remember what his deal here is. Generally, I mean, he's a camel, he spits, but um, I'm not sure what I need him for here. Oh, shit. Uh, well, that's something. Where the fuck am I? Oh, right. That's where I am. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, I don't remember. So, yeah, we're gonna run over to the ice side. I've done less stuff over there, so I'll have more to do over there. So, let's see what to do over here. Ooh. Out of the way. Out of the way. With that, I'm pretty sure I need a set of... Actually, you know what? I think I need these claw clamber shoes because they're suction cups. They keep you stuck down, so that will probably be what I want here. Let's see how these work out. Watch out. Will these help me out against this terminable wind? Did not help. Hold on, I'm gonna adjust things a bit so that uh, I keep feeling the need to like crane my neck because I want there to be 
good contact with the phone for uh, my audio here. There we go. Okay, that should be a lot better. Uh, which, yeah, it's in my face. I'm glad the camera's on this side, so even though the mic is right here in front of my face, um, the mic and the phone, which shows the chat, I don't have to worry too much about it messing with the video because it just looks like it's off to the side for you guys. Feel pretty happy with that. I'm probably going to switch to Twitch Studio sometime in the future rather than OBS as well for talking talking shop. I don't, I don't quite know if there's really an advantage. I guess the fact that it's directly integrated with Twitch would be very helpful because there's less fiddliness, but I need to find, find out how to do it with my Elgato. Because right now it looks like it's just for streaming on the desktop, which isn't terrible. I mean, I still need to be able to do that too, but that's not my main modus operandi. Hmm? Oh, there's Andrew. Make sure. Come on, turn on the speaker. There we go. Hello. Hello? Hello, Andrew? Okay. Well, volume's at max. Do not hear Andrew. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Are you there? Nope, nope, nope. Having troubles. Technical issues. Did that do it? Nope, still don't hear him. Hello? Nope, still don't hear him. Alright. We'll uh, take a minute and, uh, yeah, let's try that again. Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, there you are. I didn't have the microphone plugged in and I was struggling with it once I got it plugged in. Yeah. So, wrestling Twitter today, huh? Oh, yeah, a lot of big revelations. Oh, my God. Uh, wh which ones do we want to start with? The shitty indie wrestler who was a sexual predator? Or the... One that the comedy gods... The, the two that the comedy gods were like, Andrew, your day has sucked. I'd say or, save, save that one for second. Save the best for last. Okay, well, um... So first, uh, indie wrestler David Starr was outed as a sexual predator, and his defense was, I'm not a sexual predator, but, but I was an asshole to my girlfriends. And so, a lot of indie promotions have stripped him of their titles. Damn. Yeah, and won't be working with him going forward. I mean, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then two gloriously funny things happened. Mm -hmm. Beautifully, gloriously funny. Iggy. Andrew. Turns out, old racist, misogynist, piece of shit Jim Cornette is also a sexual predator, but also a cuck. Yep. I never thought I'd get to say such words, but he is quite literally and intentionally. Mm -hmm. He uh, apparently would offer guys contracts only if they slept with his wife while he watched. I mean, that is textbook cuck. Yeah, and then, as if the comedy gods weren't like Andrew, I know that was a lot. We don't want to give you too much at once, but 
Carmella likes when Corey Graves pisses on her. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you, comedy gods. How did you know? It's exactly what I wanted. Ah, uh, it's Christmas in June. Oh my god, my birthday came early. Uh, like, I can't find, like, what, whether it was a tweet or a fucking, you know, podcast or what, but apparently she out of herself is liking that. And people are just like, okay. Why did you have to tell me that? <laughs> we did not need to know. Some people decide to be open about, uh, about the oddest things. Yeah, like, you could've, like, that's cool, man. You could be into that. I ain't got nothing against it. You don't have to out yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like, and then, oh, what was it? There was a fucking, a fucking Gavin News, or no, Matt Gates. Did you hear about this? Hmm. Matt Gates posted a tweet of him and a younger guy, like, you know, teenager, saying, this is, uh, something my adopted son, raising him has been one of the greatest things ever, and, like, not only did he not adopt this kid, not only right. is he not this kid's father, right. it's his ex-girlfriend's little brother. Oh. <laughs> you didn't think anybody was gonna check into that, bud? This is like the equivalent of a godson. <laughs> oh, Nestor, that's the kid's name. Mm. God, it's like the comedy gods were like, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Have some political humor, too. So, this is like, it's so good. I'm having an all right day too. I got that knife sharpener that you recommended and it's just, it's so good. Oh my God, I was like, I was expecting it to be better, but like, wow, I, a knife that I was struggling to slice chicken thighs with the other like week, just having a saw at them. Today, I was able to just slice a tomato, like no problem. I know, it's, it's a lot like, smaller than I expected it to be, going off of yeah. the pictures on Amazon. Yeah, it's like the size of like a, a little cup. Yeah, like a, like a half a soda can. Yeah. If even yeah. that. And you're looking at that like, cheap fucking piece of plastic. Yeah, it ain't gonna work. They feel like there ain't no way that that suction cup gonna work. That's just gonna slide the first time I'm... Well, yeah, because it's... it's it's flat, so I'm like, how's that even gonna make any sense? But then I realized when you pull the lever up for it, it's basically yeah, yeah, yeah. yanking it in and creating like a perfect suction. Yeah, yeah. And those are, you can find a lot of things with that kind of a suction cup on them. Mm -hmm. And they are the best in the world. I had a phone mount for the car that like stuck to windows. Mm -hmm. That was basically that. And. Oh my god, those are the best suction cups in the world. And, yeah, and you're looking at it like, there's no way it's gonna work. And then you just draw it across, and you see the shavings, like... Yeah, one of the knives just, I have, like, the it, it was just peeling, like, threads. Right, and you're just like, whoa, that, it is so satisfying. Mm -hmm. It's so satisfying. And then you do that first cut, and it's just butter. Yep, I was able to slice tomatoes and slice dough without any drag, pull, having a saw at it, anything. Adam Savage once said, 
hacky sack was an incredible invention for stoners because it gave them something smaller than a guitar to annoy people with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need a case for that. You can just keep it in your pocket. That's <laughs> the like that was a tweet from Sci-Fi Wire or from Sci-Fi. Mm -hmm. Adam Savage retweeted saying, "So true. I agree with myself." <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, I saw a great tweet today. Mm. Gender is a scam made up by bathroom companies to sell more bathrooms. Yeah, Coco read that one to me earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, she tweeted it. That's we don't right. need twice the bathrooms. This is a toilet conspiracy. This flush swirls all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna tell you now, I feel like the urinals are a scam too, because those are not any kind of sanitation. If you've ever worn shorts at a urinal, you know how much splashback there is. And like, the thing about urinals, they're less efficient than just a regular fucking toilet. Yeah. Because there is a social contract. You do not stand next to another man at the urinal. It Unless there's like a wall. Or a divider yeah, of some kind. And, and it's not even like it, not that little quarter wall where you can still like see each other. No, no, no. It has to go at least shoulder deep. Mm -hmm. and, like uh, even if you're at a gay bar in a gay BDSM king club, you do not stand next to another man at the urinal. That is just a rule. Like that is some private time. You do not do that. That is wrong. You're going to hell for that. So you leave. A gap. So it's less efficient because now you've got two toilets not being used because the guys ain't standing next to each other and they won't. They will not break that line and under any circumstances. And so toilets aren't getting used. Whereas if you had just the same amount of space and put a normal toilet with a you know, cubicle and everything. Dudes would be all filling it up. Yes, that's fine. There has to be division. I, I thought very hard about that as I was thinking of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Sorry, I'm a little low energy. That yesterday's stream really exhausted me. Oh, you know what happened today? Hmm. So, we couldn't get the van, that's why I'm here now. Right, right. We couldn't, we yeah, couldn't get the if van, you, they're coming. If you don't have a crack or anything, pretty much your only option is U-Haul, and that's that's a little pricey. Well, no, 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 we could have gotten it without a credit card, but we would have needed a utility bill. Yeah, and you're between houses, so... Yeah, so we don't have to pay any utilities. So we're like, well, fuck, you know, what can we do? Yeah, I was like, you know what, I'll just call my mom, I'll borrow her truck, I'll take back roads the whole way, because it's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll hit it that way. And... Yeah, I'm doing that instead next Tuesday. And, so... I was... Just... <sighs> God, so we get home. And I'm like, well, we've got these two dressers that uh, we're using while we're here that I got flat pack I have to assemble. Mm -hmm. And Maddie insisted on doing one of them. They're identical, so I did the first one. Sure. She did the second one. And it doesn't matter, like, we had to carry them upstairs to our room. Right. So, they, they're heavy, you know? That shit sucks. The assembly flat pack is almost worse than just building a handmade version of a thing. Yeah. Like, it's more <laughs> infuriating and fragile and. Yeah, you make as... one mistake and it's splintering and tearing apart. Yeah, and those, like, if you were to just hand build one. That looked similar, it would be easier. Like, straight up sometimes. It would right. be more expensive, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody liked something I. Oh, okay, okay. Somebody liked something I retweeted, I'm like, I don't remember retweeting that. Yeah, we had the biggest 
fucking time trying to move out our old couch. Because it was it's one of those recliner couches where eat the side seats are recliners. It was the biggest pain in the ass, cause like we figured we'd probably be able to lift it up for, you know, a little, a little way, probably take some breaks, but no. Literally couldn't get it more than an inch up for like half a second. It was so fucking heavy. We, uh, I think the worst furniture move I've ever come across was, uh, like, solid wood, uh, dresser. Mmm, yeah. We had something when we moved that was really fucking heavy, and I can't remember what it was. Wait, any, uh, couch that folds out into a bed automatically is super fucking heavy, but... Oh, certainly. Um, man, what was, you helped us move, what was the heavy thing that we, like, struggled with? Shit, uh, definitely wasn't the couch, um. It wasn't the other couch. I know, that, was that gun locker, like, was a pain in the ass, but I think that was me and, uh. Coco, yeah. Yeah. There was something that was, like, just a fucking pain. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what it was. But I remember, like, getting to a point where I was yelling at people. And I'm pretty chill. <laughs> so, like, it was just a super stressful move. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, shit. Oh! TNT Drama tweeted a picture of a candle shaped like a dumpster. Hmm. And said, someone buy this for Dr. Britt Baker. <laughs> <laughs> it's a literal dumpster fire! And Big Soul oh. replied, no, save your coins. Holy shit, she's been really going all out. The, like, little pulley system she had to, oh, like, send notes to Shivani. I love the Undertaker reference at the end of that segment. Uh, where she's like, Rita, get me out of here! And, like, slapping on the car. Mm -hmm. And cuts to Big Swole, and she's like, where to, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> I love that they parody to the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do I do this? Like a wig. Oh my god! <laughs> what you got? Um, you know Jack A here? Uh maybe. Uh did you ever watch Sister Sister? Oh yeah. The mom? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody tweeted at her, I got seven inches, what you trying to do? She said, find about three more inches. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> Apparently Raven Simone got married. Yeah, I saw an article about that earlier. Happy yeah. for her. Didn't she do something like fucked up? Uh, like, not that I remember. Uh, I swear she did something like not entirely kosher. Uh, right. Upset people. Raven Simone. Uh, last I saw her, she was on The Masked Singer. Uh, I don't think 
this is what I was thinking of. Okay. Everybody's watching this and knows what the fuck I'm thinking about. Uh. Yeah, I have no clue. I'm saying something from like 2015. Hmm. Saying, uh, she has issues with ghetto names, but I don't think it was that old. Mm -hmm. It could have been something she said on the view. Because that, that the whole like show is just a controversy machine. I swear it was something she, like, tweeted. Mm. Or, like, I can't remember. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just. That's the thing. I remember that somebody said some fucked up shit. But I can't remember what the context was. Right. And I'm just like, uh. <laughs> this tweet is great. Well, it finally happened. A piece of food fell out of my mouth on a Zoom call. <laughs> nice. Holy shit! Hmm. Hold on. What's up? Hold on. What the fuck? If you freak, I gotta send this to you because somebody got fucked with me. No. They done did us a bamboozle on AEW. Oh. No. Yeah. They did us a bamboozle. What's the story? Do you remember how Chucky e. T, your best friends had a match with the Sex Gods, right? Yes. And then Orange Cassidy popped up as a cameraman and knocked the shit out of Jericho? Oh, hell yeah. Yo, come, yo, I'm up. Chuck E. T. winked over at him. The signs were there the whole time. They were right in front of our faces. Well, there was right also a point... There was a point earlier on where it, like... Somebody was standing by the ropes, you couldn't see outside of the ring, and they got... It was Sammy, I think, and he got yanked down to his feet. And then they cut to the wide shot, and the only one there was the cameraman walking by the corner at that point. Which was Cassidy. Oh, that's so good! <laughs> I'm surprised you missed that. Uh, hmm, I just gotta get one more jiggy and then I can open up the last world here. I'm trying to consider if I want to actually like try and 100% this, because I know I can't because of one specific like bit, but I could get everything except that for sure. Hmm. Oh, did you hear about that Trump video uh, getting banned on Twitter and Facebook today? Really? A Trump campaign video got banned on both. Hmm, I saw a Trump ad. Yeah. yeah. So this one's uh, video Trump tweeted showing two little toddlers running around. Mm -hmm. And the joke is, oh, ha, 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 the media will make anything with racism. It's clearly two kids playing. Yeah. So the CNN scroll is terrified toddler runs from racist baby. So uh, Trump had like, another video where uh, this woman gets dropped off by an Uber driver who's black and then looks out her window and sees a guy in a Trump hat chasing his car out. Mm. Uh, yelling, keep going, keep going, keep going. And she's like, oh, this racist chased him out of our neighborhood. So terrible. And you see all this or montage of names, you know, saying Trump's fault, Trump's fault, vote him out, Trump 2020. Then it cuts to like 10 minutes earlier mm. in the video where the guy's uh, stuck in the snow and the Trump support got him out of the snow and says that's what it means to make America great again. Mm. <laughs> and like, him yelling, keep going, keep going, so that the guy doesn't get stuck in ice. And I'm like, uh, alright. Right. The thing is, that's not the situations that are getting called racist. No, not even not. remotely. 
It's not simple misunderstandings, it's really racist shit that people don't want to believe is racist because it's not a full-on cross-burning. Like, I feel like that's the problem with a lot of conservative rhetoric is that, like, they, they don't consider something racist, they don't consider something rape, they don't consider something any of these things, unless it's the most broad, obvious version of it. So something subtle, they're just like, that's not, it's not racist to say this or that about Mexican people, but it's like, it is. Just because you're not fucking killing them does not mean that you're not racist for doing that. Alright, so here's some good news. Breaking, Christopher Columbus statue of San Francisco's Coit Tower taken down early this morning. Good. This is ahead of a planned protest that planned to throw it into the bay. I mean, shit, yeah. If, if, like, if it, it's working. <laughs> All art in the city is under jurisdiction of the SF Arts Commission, which will decide what comes next. The following statement is from the supervisor. Grant Paskin represents the area. And so they just like, we don't want it destroyed, so we gotta get out of here. Mm -hmm. You ever do that, Waha? The... You just feel how weird, like, your tongue feels in your mouth? I've never focused on it, but I feel like... Now that you're mentioning it, I probably will next time I am. <laughs> it's just like... Do it, like, really hard, too, so you get, like, a whiplash effect at the tip of your tongue. And it just... Fucking... <laughs> What? Yeah. Do you know that infamous, horrible statue of uh, Bedford Forest? Yep, yep. Somebody tweeted, I understand this statue must go down, but can we do something with the head? <laughs> and somebody said, leave it in Stephen Miller's bed as a warning. <laughs> I don't know if I if I like the sound of that. Well, the tweet says it's from a Twitter handle Angry Black Lady. It's not colorism if you're literally a white person, and if you're not, it would be black chick, which I feel like a black person would know. Hmm. I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned with that statement, with not knowing, not knowing what those terms mean. I don't, I don't know what the, what they're talking about. Yeah, I don't get it. It seems to be in reference to something, so I don't. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know about that. I'm not gonna jump into that. Don't I'm sorry, I'm that. my my entire commentary tonight is gonna consist of my uh, Twitter feed. Oh, <laughs> shit. That works for me. I wonder if there's some way to mod the vacuum cleaner so the dirt bucket is like five times as large. Yeah, I could do that. Theoretically. Well uh, still maintaining suction is the question. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, what would you use? 3D printing. Fair. What material? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe... Because I don't know enough about 3D printing, but I want one that was lightweight. Right. That was, um... Oh, maybe a metal blend of some kind? Sure. Um... And durable. Because I think that would be important. Right, right. Yeah. So, whatever the best intersection of those you know, <laughs> qualities would be. Um, and I would just model it sort of so that it fits in with the design of the vacuum. Sure. And I mean, that'd be the, the secondary function. Or the well, secondary the priority. Yeah, that would be the whole point of 3D printing, though. Otherwise. You could, uh, use a fucking soldering iron tip that 
you don't mind sacrificing forever to plastic. And a five gallon bucket and just extend it by soldering one to the other on the front. Right, right. And then cutting a hole in the middle so that the uh, dirt can fly out of the original chamber into the bucket. <laughs> Technically, shot facts actually have a very, very similar thing. Um, where you could buy a, what is essentially a five-gallon bucket, right. and it is basically that with a special lid and that a uh, funnel, and that's literally all it is. So you attach a hose to it, and then you attach the shock back to the other end of the hose, mm -hmm. or not the other end of the hose, the other end of the bucket, and it would suck through the bucket. Uh, anything that could you put the hose near, so it's basically adding, you know, to the hose. Right. And so you, and it falls into the bucket instead of going all the way to the shop back. <laughs> and the thing about that is, they sell this thing for like forty bucks. This kit, huh. and it's nothing but a five-gallon bucket with two holes in it. You could make that. It's easy. Right. You, you, you could do it with just a fucking uh, exacto knife and hot glue. Or if you wanted to, you could 3D print parts to go in the lid that make it a little more easy to hook it all up. But that's easy to make. It's so easy. That is not a difficult thing. See the uh, article where the inner circle talked about uh, the infamous Mike Tyson segment? Uh, I didn't know. Uh, Santana says, I was looking across the ring at Vitor and then Rashad Evans. I didn't even know he was going to be there. I looked at him, I was like, yo, that's Rashad Evans? I was like, oh man, I was like, I need a knife or something. I can't take these guys all legit. I'm about to stand behind Jake and be like, yeah, get him, Jake. I was a little intimidated, I'm not going to lie. At one point, I looked at Ortiz because I didn't know all these guys was coming out. At one point, they're all lined up in front of us. I look at Ortiz, I was like, yo, I need to clean a pair of drawers. I think it's about that time. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, that was such a good one. Yeah, I was surprised uh, Clark watches AEW with us sometimes, and we asked him who his favorite uh, face and who his favorite heel were. Uh, face, he said Cody. Okay, yeah, he's about that. Yeah, yeah. But heel, he said Santana. That was pretty surprising to me. Can I ask a question? When you look at Santana, are you like, he reminds me of someone that you can't quite place it? Vaguely, yeah. I think I figured it out. Oh? Every now and then, he'll move his face into just the right position to, like, it doesn't always look like this. But when he's talking, eventually his face will hit this shape where he looks just like Sinbad the Comedian. Oh, yeah, he does. It's so weird. And I think it's because it's so momentary that your brain doesn't have time to like, he looks like said that. It's just like, he yeah. looks like someone. It's so fucking weird. He just looks like, I'm sure he's heard that a thousand times. Oh, yeah, I'm the same guy who says that uh, Ryan Reynolds looks like Benjamin with Babish. Oh, well, I'd have to look at them side by side. Oh, let me hook you up. Okay. Ryan Reynolds. Images. Shit. Let's pick Shit. one where he's got a beard to make it even more like obvious. Right. It's it's really the eyes. Like that's why it'll be more obvious if he's got a beard. Uh, 
Shorter of a forehead, maybe, yeah. but like you could believe they were cousins. Yeah, certainly. You could easily believe that cousins, maybe like, even it's... brothers. I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's the eyes. It really is the eyes. The eyes, for sure. Like they have the same eyes, and I never realized how much I like those eyes until like you see both of them giving you eyes at the same time, like, oh my god. Yeah. Holy shit. That's the closest to, like, a threesome with twins you can pull off without it being incest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be amazing, though. Brian Reynolds shredded abs, snacks afterwards with Babish. Mm. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> Brian Reynolds strikes me as a, a switch, but only because he thinks it would get a laugh if he bottomed. Hmm. And he wouldn't be wrong. Right? Like, I would... I would absolutely... Like, because I can see him either as, like, Van Wilder or Deadpool. Yeah. Him yeah. And being like, what? Like, you've never tried it? Liars. He d I mean, have you seen the first Deadpool movie? I don't like Deadpool, so I've not seen any of them. Oh, there actually is a moment where he bottoms in uh, the first movie. Uh, see? See? And Babish. Firm, but gentle top. You know? This gives me an idea. This gives me an I idea wanna... for a game. What is it? Da 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 da! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to. Top, bottom, or switch. I will give you, I will give you various celebrities, and you oh, will, you will on. give your judgment. All right, all right. Let's start, let's start easy enough. AEW edition. So we will go with AEW stars. Oh yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Starting bad boy Joey Janela. Top, bottom, or switch. Switch as fuck. And he only wants to partners that also are. Mmm. Okay. He ain't got time for that, like, lazy, like, no, you ain't got time. Shit, no. It's, we're taking turns, we're pulling each other's hair. <laughs> he is a 100% everything switch. Top switch, bottom switch, uh, dom switch, and sub switch. All right. After that, Ooh, no, that one's too easy. Uh, <laughs> what was it gonna, what was it gonna be? Sammy. Twink bottom. Most, most assuredly. Uh, shit. Um. All right, then. After that, let's go with. Who do I want to say? Uh, sexy Chucky T. Top energy, but like that kind of top that's like a stoner top, you know? Mm. Not like, hey man, you wanna fool around or something? And he's just like, yeah. And he's like, alright, but like, I don't do butt stuff. Mm. He's got that kind of energy. Sure. Like just a kind of aloof uh, top, you know? Like, yeah, I'm not really looking for much right now. You just want to blow me in. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Alright. So in that similar vein, Trent. Concerned bottom. Concerned bottom. Yeah. I feel like he would constantly be like, uh, Are you guys getting enough water? Um, do I need to... Uh, do you guys need snacks or anything before you uh, all manage my... 
Sure, sure. Hold on a second. Okay. We will return <laughs> to top bottom of switch in just a moment. Oh. I can't do this fucking snowball shit, man. This is not working out for me. <laughs> you good? said the, um, what? Stupidly high. they can't trust anybody with it. Basically. So, uh, you can buy it in South Carolina, it's like $20 a bottle. So it's like, oh shit, I'll make my extracts with that. That is the, that is what it is for. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, I might as well drink this shitty vodka. Oh. Mm. It tastes like shitty vodka. Yeah. That is my understanding. Um, I think I had Everclear once. A, like, a pony convention, they had a panel that was a, um, effectively just a frat party. And so, they just had, like, one of those Gatorade coolers full of, like, Everclear and, like, not, like, Tampico. So, uh, yeah, that, that shit is, is strong. So, Everclear, I like Ooh. to drink straight. So, like, a uh, pinky's Ooh. worth a uh, solo cover. Mm. If that. Like, not even a full shot, right? Right. And just let that go. Just let that... It's enough. Man, I don't get, like, the negative effects of alcohol that I normally get, like, feeling of loss of control of the limbs or whatever. I feel like I could get up and pee if I had to. Uh, whereas with any other alcohol, I feel like I'm not in control. Huh. Uh... Alright. Returning to our game of top, bottom, or switch. Da, 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 da. Yes. All right, so as we just did both of the best friends, we must do their best friend. Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. Switch, but he's the middle of the sandwich. Mm. You know, like he only really like does threesomes. Yeah, he doesn't really talk, but he would if you know, he was interested. Right. It's just like too lazy to talk, so technically a switch. Like if you get on top of him and do all the work, he's fine, yeah. But yeah, you know, he ain't gonna make the effort himself. So Yeah, that's who he is. Alright, moving along the take team divisions. Switching over to the Lucha Brothers. We'll start with Ray Phoenix. Mm, heavy switcher. Okay. Full on switch. Um, can't put it in words. You just know he switches. Okay. Sometimes mid belt. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. The other side of the Lucha Bros coin, Pentagon Jr. Firm top. Hmm. Absolutely. Dom top. Like that. Okay. I can see that. All right, I'm gonna throw you throw you a curveball with one of the newbies, Abaddon. Chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral. Okay. Is whichever way the breeze may be blowing. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Uh. I think 
one of the classic one. Ooh, this might be a little obvious, but Matt Hardy. And you may 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 say whether each version of him is a different one. The overall Matt Hardy is a switch because of the multiple personalities. Yeah, that's what I thought you were gonna say. Version one, Matt, straight. Mm. Hetero. Truly hetero. Closet gay. Hmm. Ver uh mm. and her team extreme. Mm -hmm. Top. Absolute top. Uh Millionaire Matt. Top. Absolute top. Uh Broken Matt. Pre uh What's this one? Incarnation's name? Damascus. Damascus, yeah. The original incarnation of Broken Man. Switch. Hmm. Because immortal, like, immortal being, you know? Sure. So, I mean, you gotta get bored and try something new at some point, right? Oh, so. Uh, let's see. Logan Matt, the WWE version. Would be asexual. <laughs> sure. This broken map with Damascus, top down. Hmm. Let's see. Alright. Next would be. Let's move to one of the heavy hitters. Uh, let's go with the Young Bucks, starting with Matt Jackson. Matt Tom. No, not even a question. Mm. BTE Matt. Oh. Um, okay. He thinks, it would, he thinks it would be funnier. Right. Alright, and then... On the other side of that, Nick Jackson. Top. But he doesn't admit it publicly, because he doesn't want to outshine Matt too soon. Mm, yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. I cannot deny that. Did you know their brother was one of the referees? Really? Yeah, he was in BTE. Huh. Yeah, like, you know, like, they're probably... Yeah. Uh, the poor guy, he, he's just... He doesn't have the same, uh, appearance they do. Hmm. I mean, yeah, they do... They have a real specific look. Although, honestly, if you... If I did not know that they were from California, that's probably the last place I'd expect. What's that? They just don't have so much of a California look. I would have assumed, like, Texas. Uh, yeah, but you gotta also remember part of their gimmick is being good Christian boys. I don't know how much of that I buy. Yeah? Like, I, I could see that easily being a, um... Quirk. Okay. Um... Because, I mean, first of all, unlike other, like, extremely religious wrestlers, <laughs> they never incorporate it into their gimmick somehow. So, yeah. like, you don't see, like, I'm not gonna name names, Lance Archer, who's got, like, a tattoo on their back that's very obvious. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just saying they, they don't Well, it's really... also... Lance Archer was, like, big in Japan, right? Yeah, the crosses are, like, a whole different aesthetic in Japan. Oh, no, he's super religious. Okay. Uh, he talks about in interviews how his religion is important to him and how he prayed on whether to go to AEW or not. Right. Yeah, so... It's just, um... That kind of a thing. Like, he's stupidly religious. I don't mean, like, he's stupid to be religious. I mean, like, the amount of religious he is is so gargantuan that I am too stupid to comprehend. Right. <laughs> Gameplay liked by Tweet. Which one? 
so comic book resources tweeted, Sony sell digital PS5 may not be a good idea. Here's why. Right. And so I'm firmly in the camp of slotted PS5. I know the digital one looks better, you know, slicker, prettier. I think they both look real ugly. And I don't see I how... Like I, I don't like that they have to be vertical. I don't see a way that they'd be able to be horizontal, which would is kind of neat that. You can design, uh, you can print something or just make a thing that would let it lie vertical or horizontal. Right. It'll be, and I'm guessing that it Ooh. actually can lie, hor or lie horizontal. We're just being shown it in vertical because that looks very much like the kind of bases they sell. Ah, that curve. I don't know. I know. Uh, it would sit level, I think, if the white part is actually just sitting on a black base. I think it'll sit fine. Right. Um, but I tweeted, I'll not be getting one because then my Gamefly account would be useless. Give me that disc slot, baby. Right. <laughs> if Gamefly liked it. I like that they're at least making the option, because yeah, there are some people who just are not going to need the disc slot, and if they can save some costs, like, why not? I have a large digital library, but I also have Gamefly, which is how I play 90% of the games I play right now. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I highly recommend Gamefly if you've got a console. It is so good. Cannot recommend it enough. I I like the console. I think it looks good. I think um the controller looks fine. Um, the controller looks it, fine. It looks a little more sleek, but it is still effectively the same form factor they've had forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I my don't my I, issue with it is that they haven't shown me anything that really makes me feel that it needed. That we needed a new console. Everything that they've advertised looks like something that could just be on PS4. There's no large yeah. leap in capability that makes me feel that there was necessity for um, a whole new generation console. Um, I haven't seen anything yet, personally. But I feel like, honestly, the stuff you can get on PlayStation 4 now looks as good as you can get. Like, without doing, like, this super good FMV. I guess, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's a, um... There's just nothing drawing me to it, because, like, most of the stuff that is going to come out for the first few years will be coming out on both for a bit. And, like, it's going to have backwards compatibility, so, like, it, 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 that's the one thing that makes me mildly interested, but it's only backwards compatible to four. And that's, uh, that's Which is fine for me, because I don't have any PS3 games. There right. aren't many for the PS3 that I would want to play that I couldn't get for the PS4 or Switch. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather be able to play Wii games, Wii U games specifically, because um, I have a Wii. I've got a PS2, so that covers PS2 and PS1 eras for me. And as much as I love the PS3, a lot of the best games that I would want to revisit have been re-released on PS4. Right. So, I have no strong connection. And I know I'm unique in having the PS2 still for a lot of people, but... Oh yeah, I wish I still had mine. Yeah, so, I know, like... I've got access to a wider variety of games than most people have, but... The PS3 library was great. That's why a lot of it's been re-released. Mm -hmm. That so with that being the case, the PS3 was kind of made redundant. Like you don't really need a PS3 to play some of the best games. And if what you want your PS3 for is some really obscure fucking games, that's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to get one. I'm just saying that for me, it's not a necessity anymore. Like I can complete collections without it. The, uh, games that I want. Sure. 
I... Yeah, I don't know. I, I just... I, I, I don't see much reason to get it until they start exclusively releasing to that console. Because for the most part, I'm sure there's stuff under the hood that it's more more uh, interesting with, but, like, I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I guess it's just disappointing because, like, we already had, uh, for this new generation, the Switch come out, which is, like, the most um, innovative, like, form factor for a video game console, as far as what I want out of a video game console. I like it better than the images I've seen of the new Xbox. Oh... I've seen some of the images, which I I can't tell if they're jokes or not. It looks so the, ridiculous. The black tower. Mm. What have you seen? Because what I've seen is today, like it looks like a black tower. Yeah, I've seen that one. Um. And I've seen that from some reputable sources. Hmm. And it looks awful. It looks like a really fat, um, mid-tens modem. Right. Like, a modem you would have gotten in, like, 2012. Yeah, it, it just, like, you could almost see Xbox Belkin written on the fucking side of it. Right. And I'm like, that can't be real. Uh, I, I think I might leave this group. Like, what group? It's a nice. It's a group that I want actually name. Uh, a craft writer started it. She wanted to talk about a way, like, I think it was before all this started, but the fucking condition has reignited its use. Hmm. Um, cooking on a budget. Okay. Twitter group. And so, like, how do you stretch your money? What's a recipe you can make where you can share this, like, super cheap? Uh, what are some substitutions you've found or useful kind of things? Right, right, right. Yeah, I jokingly said, can we name it Scrap Iron Chef? <laughs> nice. Dudes won't won't uh, call it quits. They'll think like, oh, maybe I'll be the guy that she cheats for. It's like, you really think you're that that fucking hot shit? Yeah, like if she's already not interested. What about the personality of? No, no, just get to know me. Just listen to me talk, and you'll like me. Do you think is she gonna like? like well, I mean, he's right, I didn't give him a chance to really explain himself. Maybe, like, no! It's the, like, debate me of dating. Don't do it, yeah? No. Why, why would they give you the chance? Wait, stop it. It's, uh, it's always, like, shocking to me that they have to go, I have a boyfriend! Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like... It took you that long to realize you should have shut the fuck up, my man. Regardless, even if they didn't, the guys who need that card are like the the biggest idiots. I'm gonna start like putting a shut the fuck up button in bars, mm. so that uh, you know a cashier, uh, another patron, just walk up 
to like a touch screen layout of the bar, pick the table they want, and just hit a button. A little sign will pop up that just says, shut the fuck up. Nice. And then it like slowly descend back down. And <laughs> if they keep going, another sign pops up. I said, shut the fuck up. And it slowly goes back down. <laughs> The dire, dire service that we need in this day really? and age. Really? Uh, there's. Did you see the John Oliver bit about facial recognition software? Yeah, that shit. And the fucked. one where, where a guy can just pull up an app, take a picture of your face, and get your fucking contact information in public. Yep. That is yeah, pure. Like, that is doxing. Full, full on. Yeah. We should have that, but only allow the women to use it, so they can send it to a guy and it just says, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Watch it. Oh, fuck. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Down I go. Taylor Swift is coming out as just like a wonderful person. Really? In all this. Like, yeah, she has been vehemently like anti-racist. Uh, so you explain. She shared an article from The Root. Uh, why Juneteenth should be a national holiday. Uh, like, she has done. She, like, from the beginning of the protests, she's been amazing. Like, I am. I'm not gonna listen to her music, but I am a fan of her mm. as a person. Uh, she, for my family, everything that has transpired recently gives us an opportunity to reflect, listen, and reprogram any part of our lives that hasn't been loudly and ferociously anti-racist, and to never let the privilege lie dormant when it could be used to stand up for what's right. Personally, I've made the decision to give all of my employees June 19th off in honor of Freedom Day from now on, and to continue to educate myself on the history that brought us to this present moment. Wow. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, she's also, like, vehemently anti-Trump as well. Oh, yeah. Like, I am genuinely, like... Because her fan base... Well, I would assume most are decent. It's not, you know... The type to take that well. Yeah. Like, there's a lot that are, uh, Bible Belt conservatives. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, shit, she started out as a country star. forget how this is last how hard this last world is it's just a, a pain to get through everything without dying have you ever seen uh ellie valley's work ellie valley i don't think so um i'll just send you some tweets he's really good mm -hmm. like he does this really specific style of art for mm -hmm. comics of political nature. Yes. And he is firmly anti Trump, anti Nazi. Like, it's very obvious. Right. And, like, the right wingers try to, like, paint him as a Nazi and a racist. Uh, of course they do. <laughs> and, like,. He's literally calling out the Nazis and the racists. Let's see. Facebook yeah. let Trump. Facebook let Trump run 88 ads with inverted not, uh, red triangle, an infamous Nazi symbol. Yup, I saw that. 88. 
Yep. Not only... Eight. Eight. He, Are you fucking kidding me? He did that, and he was specifically talking about Antifa while doing the Red Triangle, which is political opponents in the Nazi code. So, yeah, he's directly just saying, like, no, nope, don't have a legitimate reason, just racist. It's the fact that it was specifically 88. You, you know the importance of that, right? Yes. Okay, okay. If you don't, do the alphabet. Eighth letter, twice. What was the famous Nazi slogan that had two H's? That is, without a shadow of a doubt, it's not even a dog whistle at this point. It's just active shouting it from the rooftops. We're Nazis. Here's the thing. I honestly, I'm not even sure if it's necessarily Trump, but I definitely feel that the people around him are having him do this, knowing that he has no idea what the fuck it means. And he doesn't care. Oh. This is the guy who talked about how he slept with a copy of Mein Kampf by his bed. But said it's okay, a Jewish friend gave it to me. That and then the friend who gave it to him came out and said, I'm not Jewish. Oh, yeah, god damn it, that's... Uh, there's so many fucking controversies at this point that I can't keep track of them anymore. Yeah, that was an early one. That was still during the campaign. Yeah, like Ellie Wiesel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah! Instead of Eli, which would be the anglicized pronunciation. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Today has just been comedy gold. Trump tweeted, do you get the impression the Supreme Court doesn't like me? He, he fucking appointed, like, almost a third of the people in there. <laughs> Not all, He, like, literally did everything he could to stack it in his favor, and he's still fucking losing his battles. Because but even they, even the people is. who directly fucking, fa like, he directly put there are like, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, so my tweet, <laughs> really good, this is a good one. Uh, in response to AMC saying they won't require people to wear masks. Oh, uh, fuck, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody said, coming soon to theaters. Tenant, Candyman, A Quiet Place Part 2. Not my black ass. <laughs> yup. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too, is that they specifically said they're trying to avoid political controversy, but it's like, you, you can't, though, because stating that you're, you're not... making it. Yeah, th I... that's the thing, is... It's a binary. If you allow masks, if you don't allow masks, both of those are a political like choice at this point. If we're if it's going to be politicized, then yeah, there's no avoiding it at this point. It... <sighs> Somebody told me I had the uh, a podcast I used to listen to. I won't promote it here because both guys turned out to be super shitty. One, criminally so. Oof. But, I mean, both arguably criminally so, but technically the one super criminally so. Damn, this um, fucking area is so dark, I can't see anything. But uh, before I found out about all that, I was a big fan of their show. Mm -hmm. And they had an anniversary episode coming up and like asked fans to send in MP3s as if they were doing a call into a radio show. And so they could reply to them, and I called in, yeah, I called in, and they told me, that dude sounds like he could be doing the voiceover to movie trailers. Hmm. <laughs> and I was like, I could see that, because then I started doing it in the car. 
Alright. This summer, coming to a theater near you. Like, I can do it. I mean, that's the, the way a lot of, like, professional voice actors will do. They'll just do it in their car while they're driving around to practice. Well, I heard the podcast, I was in my car, and that's what made me think to try it. It's like, you know, I don't know which care bear or something I've been replaced by my little partner. My little partner does not have any shit. If you want to get it extra, extra good and gravelly, you get, you get real close on the mic. I can't, I don't quite have the range for it, but... In a world in which my little pony has replaced the Care Bears, one little girl is not having this shit. Watch this summer as Alyssa Milano. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> Alyssa Milano. Alyssa Milano? Okay, interesting she's choice. The she's the mom, she's the mom. Okay, she's the mom. Uh... <laughs> You figured that the one playing the little girl would get top billing on that one. Not yet. Because you gotta build up to her. Like, she's the main event. You don't wanna. Yeah. Alyssa Milano. Winona Ryder. The other mom. Other mom? And are we talking two moms for one girl, or are we talking yeah. two separate. No, groups? two moms. They're married. Don't. Okay, okay. I'm not. I'm not denying it. Think, I'm just saying. I just, I just want I just to make sure that I understand to... what's going on here. You know what? Let's replace. Uh, Alyssa Milano's out. She's been fired. Uh, the director didn't like her. Couldn't get along with her. Sure. <laughs> she kept shitting and... in the coffee pot. Got it. Right. Uh, as she does. Instead, it's uh, Christina Ricci and Winona Ryder. Okay. Married couple. Their daughter. Mara Wilson. Mm, current Mara Wilson? Yes. Okay. Yes, why not? This is our movie, and Mara Wilson plays Alice, the little girl who is not having this shit. And she goes on a one-person campaign to, like, fucking get them back, or she goes on a one-person campaign to get them the fuck back. Does she have what it takes to traverse a bombed out Toys R Us, an abandoned CVS pharmacy, hmm. and a, <laughs> and a long forgotten KB Toys? Can she find the last of the Care Bears coming this summer? Oh. Like a pop song that has no place in this movie starts playing. This is like <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl. It's <laughs> not even a toy we mentioned. <laughs> that's a that's a fetish song. Do they know that? Oh my god. Oh, it is. Oh, it is super a fetish song. Huh. It's a 100% adultification song. Okay. Oh, you don't believe me? No, I let believe me, you. Let me enlighten you. Let me bring you into the renaissance to realizing that none of the songs we listen to as kids are okay. Aqua, Barbie Girl, lyrics. I've tweeted this. Hi, Barbie. Hi, kid. Wanna go for a ride? Sure, can. Jump in. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. You can brush my hair, undress me everywhere. Imagination, life is her creation. The undress me everywhere line has always stuck out to me as being kind of. So that's the touchy. chorus, right? Mm -hmm. The verse, the verses. I'm a blonde bimbo girl in a fantasy world. Dress me up, make it tight. I'm your dolly. You're my doll rock and roll. Feel the glamour and pink. Kiss me there, or kiss me here, touch me there. Hanky panky. You can touch, you can play. If you say I'm always yours. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic is fantastic. You can brush my hair and dress me everywhere. Like imagination, life is your creation. You can touch, you can play. You can, if you say I'm only yours. Uh, make me walk, make me talk, do whatever you please. I can act like a star, I can beg on my knees. Come jump in, bimbo friend, let us do it again. Hit the town, fall around, let's go party. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a dollification song. I mean, I believed you to begin with, but like, wow, no, that's... That's... that's yeah. There's, like, a, there's no, like, subtle interpretation. That's definitely... Like, I'm a blonde bimbo girl in a fantasy world. Dress me up naked tight. I'm your dolly. Uh, mm -hmm. Make me walk, make me talk. Do whatever you please. I can act like a star. I can beg on my knees. Come that, jump in. Yeah, that's... that's. There's no reinterpreting interpreting that one. Town full around, let's go party. Kiss me here, touch me there, inky pinky. It is. Absolutely. And like, there was another song I was thinking about the other day that, like, I could only remember a few lines. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a song that we all know, uh, but you only can understand, like, a few lines. So I gotta. Gotta pull it up. That's not it. It's been one week since you looked at me. Like, every line I could remember was super problematic, and... Right. It's been... Uh, hold it now and watch the middle way, because I still make you stop think. You think you're still... Or you'll think you're looking at Aquaman. Like, uh, who's bragging that they got a body like Aquaman, first of all? Listen, they all had the same body in the olden days. I summon fish to the dish, although I look like Chalet Swiss. I like the sushi because it's never touched a frying pan. Okay. Uh, hot like wasabi when I buzz rams. Rhymes. Like, big like Leanne rhymes. Because I'm all about value. Bird campers got the mad hits who try to match wits. Try to hold me, but I buzz through. Gonna make a break and take a fake. I like a stinking ache and shake. Well, I like vanilla, it's the finest of the flavors. Gotta see the show, cause then you'll know the red go is gonna grow, cause it's so dangerous, you'll have to sign a waiver. And then here's where it starts to go, like... Um, those well, are fucking well, problematic lines. Keep in mind... That, that, that most... No, all of that song, that, all of the, the rap to that song is a freestyle. Yeah, but, like, here's where it gets questionable. Mm -hmm. How can I help it if I think it's funny when you're mad? Trying hard not to smile, though I feel bad. I'm the kind of guy who laughs at a funeral. Can't understand what I mean. You soon will. I have a tendency to wear my mind on my sleeve. I have a history of taking off my shirt. Those are not good things. Listen. I... Like... Mm. You're mocking someone's anger by laughing at it and saying, I can't help it. You're the kind of guy who laughs at a funeral. Well, you don't get that, you'll get it soon enough. And being one person who takes their shirt off a lot that's not a sex worker, that isn't a complete douchebag. Fair. Like, the sex workers and wrestlers are the only ones who really get away with taking their shirt off a lot and not being assholes. Um, and then comes this line, Chicken in China, the Chinese chicken. You have a drumstick and your brain stops ticking. Yeah, I don't... I don't know about that one. I, that, um, that, 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 that is not a good line. <laughs> like Kurosawa, I make bad films. Okay, I don't make films. But if I did, they'd have a samurai. I do, I do actually kind of really love that lyric because it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Gotta get to with Sailor Moon because that cartoon has got the boom anime babes. Yeah. That makes me think the wrong thing. Oh, he was jerking off to Sailor Moon. There's no question. No, that's what he says. Gotta get into a Sailor Moon because that cartoon got the boom anime babes that make me think the wrong thing. And then it cuts back to the having funny when you're mad, laughing at funerals. Flip the hook, so. Yeah, but like, that's really. Like, I understand why she ain't talking to you in a week. I wouldn't either. Seriously. Like, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, my man. <laughs> Man. 
somebody got apparently on Twitter earlier there was people making fun of this guy who apparently he was talking about AEW and NXT's ratings mm -hmm. and how NXT only wins in one demographic and it's not one advertisers particularly like. Right. And so this guy said, cool, I'm still gonna watch NXT though. And mm. people, like, I was like looking at the comments to that. And the people were talking about this guy is only saying that because he's been an AEW stand for like weeks and months, almost the entire AEW run. Right. And he stopped when they said Black Lives Matter. Wow. What shithead. And so he only watches WWE, which tells you a lot about WWE, doesn't that's, it? That's the hill he's gonna die on? Mm -hmm. What's that? They said it's bad to be racist? Ah, I can't buy by that. Now I gotta watch the shittier show. Just to make we a point. We don't want you there, then. Like, you have no place in our community. Sincerely. Like, come on. AEW is for everyone, not specifically you, Dale. Also, I found the name Dale is the perfect, like, just, you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, it's the male equivalent of Karen or Stacy. Well, even more than that, it's like, it's more, it's in the same way that Karen is a very specific type of person, Dale is a very, a, a very specific type of guy. Yeah. And I don't want people to think we're, like, referencing, like, Dale Gribble. Like, no, no, no. No, Dale Gribble a, is, a, is a whole other cat yeah, in this, in this glitter. Yeah, he's absolutely, like, a QAnon follower, I guarantee that. But, like, this is not Dale. This is the kind of guy who wears the, like, khaki pants and the white polo shirt and the red MAGA hat. And, like, he says, what? Why can't I say that word? Like, that's Dale. If you need to ask, bud, then you do not have the responsibility to even understand it. Like, not only that, but like, imagine wanting to. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like, why would you want to be allowed to say it? Yeah. Like, and I did. I showed it's you that such, one It's thing. such petulant, immature nonsense. That they're just like, why, can, why can't I do that too? Freedom of speech, I'm supposed to be doing whatever I want. It's like, yeah, but they're also the responsibility to understand why you should not say certain things. And if you're of speech, if you're just gonna say anything, like, if you're just gonna say anything, then you don't get what free speech is about to begin with, because you don't understand what words are for. And also, freedom of speech don't mean freedom from consequences. You say something stupid, you could still catch these hands. And I, I, that's a shoot, brother. I, I, I will knock the shit out of somebody. I, I just do not get... It, it's just... It's just so... Like, immature. Like, I don't know why, why people can't just understand, like take the time to educate themselves because it's also like the immaturity of like I hate learning stuff god why do I gotta learn new things I know enough I went to school it's like there's so much out there dude and school is ac actively just propaganda to begin with they're not teaching yeah. you anything well they're training you to work in factories and yeah. now that factory jobs are dying off it's even more outdated and useless than ever before mm-hmm like, and if you think I'm making that up, I'm not. Like, that is absolutely 100% why school is structured the way it is, is to train you to prepare for factory work. The modern school structure of 8 to 3 being, you know, signaled by bells, when to go where, all started at the start of the Industrial Revolution to prepare kids to work in factories. 100%. And so, this idea that, you know, and like, kids going to kindergarten like we do now, that is super 
new to like the human existence. Like, oh yeah. At that age, a lot of kids were working in factories where their tiny hands could fit in the machines better, or selling matches on the side of the road, or mm. newspapers, or shining shoes, like chimney sweeps, like oh, fucking. And that was the 1800s, like kindergarten as we know it is very new. Um, yeah, I mean. Shit, kindergarten and Montessori are both things that came out of World War II. Montessori was, like, created by Mussolini and, uh, uh, kindergarten, I mean, it's clearly, it's a German institution. Yeah, it literally means garden of kids. Yep. And as a kid, I always thought, it sounds like kid garden. Because, kid, uh, it is? German is very similar to English. Yeah. It's uh, very, it's very mm, useful in that way. I remember hearing one time that German is the closest sister language to English in both uh, sentence and you know, grammar structure. But also, like, some words, like, we just have the same words for a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, if, if you like so. listen to German, it, a lot of it sounds like English with an American accent. And in fact, in Germany, like a good amount of the people who live there do speak English um, and just sound like someone from like the Midwest. Yeah, and um, one of the funnier things to me is like French, Spanish, Italian. Uh, Portuguese are all based off of Latin languages. Yes, the Romantic languages. Yeah. Whereas English steals words from that, but is heavily based in Germanic languages, like the Franks and the uh, Saxons, uh, the Vikings at one point. You know, mm -hmm. all these languages more or less, you know, same style. So that's why in Spanish you would say la salsa verde, the sauce green, whereas in English you would say the green sauce. Right. Um, that's why you'd say la pelo rojo, the red hair, or the hair red versus the red hair. Right. It's Latin. It's, it's from the Latin root of structure. Whereas, in English, you would say, the red car. Mm -hmm. And in German, you would say, das Frosen, uh, Wagen. Yeah, the red car, like... Uh, the White House would be, das Weissel House. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's the thing. Das Weissel House, like... You can pretty much figure out what I'm saying. Exactly. I mean, um, yeah, the majority of it is pretty, pretty obvious when you break it down. And in fact, because of uh, America's influence on Japan, a lot of J Japanese is just a, a Western language with a Japanese accent. Considering that a lot of the stuff that we brought over, they didn't have a specific word for, so they just kind of gave it. Um, they they yeah. just called it the same thing, but fitting with their syllabic language. And they had to add vowels to the ends of words that uh, were like uh, nouns that didn't end with a vowel. So mm -hmm. like, cause they don't end words like fork, they would never end that word on a consonant. Yeah, it'd be foruka. So, yeah. Or fork uh, in China, I think it is. Uh, uh, milk. They would never milk. So Aaron was talking about he went to Ch uh, Japan on a trip, one of the more recent ones, I guess, and wanted a milk tea. So mm -hmm. he said milk in Japanese and tea in Japanese. And the girl stared at him like, what are you talking about? And, like, she had no idea, and she, he, like, described what it was, and she goes, Oh, Mirku tea? Exactly. Well, it's because they 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 don't use letters the way we do. They use syllables. So specific. It's aside from something like um, 
the letter N would be considered a syllable, but, like, for the most part, it's a, a, just, like, I don't know exactly how many Coke would be able to answer that, but, um, but, like, there's just, like, a few syllables that are a consonant and then a vowel, and so if any English words that don't have a, uh, that don't already have an analog in the Japanese language will, they will basically, uh, uh, translate it by fitting it into the closest syllables that they can, based on the letters that are in it. And similarly, even though they have the syllables like that, they also don't have uh, a lot of the same letters. Like, B and V are the same to them, L and R are the same to them, which a lot of people know about that one. But, um, like, it, it, it's interesting how, how we kind of completely fucked their culture <laughs> up. Because, like, with World War II, like, a lot of people treat Japan as weird, but it's like, it was, like, occupied by American soldiers for a long time, and that, like, really fucked around with their, their entire culture and their entire, like, way of living. So, s stuff like the, the obsession with panties that's so common is, um, is specifically because of, like, American influence. Traditional, like, Japanese clothing did not really include underwear for uh, females at all, or if it did, it was a much simpler thing. So when we introduced panties to them, it became a fetishistic thing that a lot of escorts would wear. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you, Pigman? What's up? Hello? So, uh, Hello? Re in reference to Jim Cornette, uh, and that news, somebody said, poor guy's out here pounding a 50-year-old goth chick with Wendy's hamburger wrappers in the sheets, and the whole time I have to hear a high-pitched, exasperated voice now. Is that what fucking really is? My friend sent me that, and then we just started, like, riffing on, uh, him. <laughs> like, just giving him a fucking hard time. Oh, man. Oof. I need to get some new headphones. These ones are really not, like, feeling comfortable for long periods. Wait, I actually should go in here. The fucking... Yeah, I saved this fucker. Give me a reward. Breaking black and minority ethnic groups could be among first to get coronavirus vaccine. And uh, somebody retweeted with stairs and Tuskegee experiment. Yeah. Some people gave Nickelodeon a hard time for including Korra in that uh, popular tweet. Really? And say, yeah, because Nickelodeon actively preventing them, prevented them from like really expressing her as an LGBT character. But I thought you know, her and uh, her main female crush got together by the end of that. I never, I never watched I it past so, the first like, season, so I don't know. I've never watched any of it, so I don't know. But like that's the discourse I've seen. Around. The first season is good, but the thing is, it's a fully contained story, so I just never, I never like continued with it because it's like it's it's done. You guys finished it. What, what more is there to say? But the fact that she does get with the, I, mm, it's definitely really intriguing. The original show was very good. I definitely watched all of that, but that was also like a story meant to be. That's the thing is with TV, there needs to be like more TV that is designed to end. Yeah. Speaking of, you're coming up on two hours. You've got five minutes. Yeah. Didn't you want to do a two-hour stream? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm paying. I'm paying attention to the time. I have it literally like right in my fucking eye right now. So that, like, literally, screen is on this eye, and the phone is on the left eye. Here's a question I, I'm curious about. Were you ever a fan of Foamy the Squirrel? Um... I watched some of the stuff. I wasn't, like, a full-time... Like, I, I didn't watch all of the stuff, but 
every now and then I watched it and I found it kind of funny. I was also like 13 at the time, so. Yeah, like when I was in high school, I remember loving it. Like, we would go to Hot Topic and buy the foamy the swirl stickers and everything. Oh, and fuck. Like, yeah, that sounds like a very Hot Topic item. Oh, yeah. Like, one was him holding up a, a tater treat going, someone should set you in the eye with a really hot touch run. I was like, gotta have that for three dollars. <laughs> so, uh, I, when we moved to Savannah, I was like, man, Maddie has no idea who Foamy the Squirrel is. Let me show her some of this classic comedy. Mm. It's, it doesn't quite hold up. He's still doing videos. Hmm. Last I saw, he's still producing stuff. And, I thought, um, I thought this, th that series ended though, right? No, it's on YouTube now. Really? I thought it was over. Like, they made, did, like, a Roseanne ending where it was a huge twist out of nowhere. No, uh, let me see. Let me do this in a <laughs> private tab. Oh, I want this in my search history. Yeah, don't let that one fuck up your, uh, your analytics. Like, it was a lot. Yeah, it will press. Uh, last video was 13 hours ago. Oh, shit. And it's a minute 50, uh, two days ago. Yeah, he's still doing stuff. He's hmm. still posting. Weird. And, yeah, and, um... Wait, a lot of stuff you would be like, yes, I could agree with it, but a lot of it you're just like... I mean, it was edgy humor back, back in the Newground days, so I don't really... Some of it, like, some of the characters that he had created, very racist. Yeah, no, like most the, assuredly. Like I said, like new, Newgrounds, they had a very specific type of humor, which is yeah, to say, like, racist as fuck. But you get the feeling he did it to be inclusive, like... Uh -huh. like this was his idea of inclusivity. God, he's still doing like so many fucking videos. Um, but like, I think he had an influence on a lot of people's humor at the time. Oh, most most definitely. I mean, he was like that was one of the larger things on Newgrounds was yeah. Tommy the Squirrel. Yeah, and I don't like think him. And it was after good. I think after him is pretty much when Aaron started popping up in there, and he was f f full on like, as people joke, like the god of fucking new grounds. Everybody was trying to be him. Yeah, and I only went to the porn section of new grounds. Yeah. I, I did. I so went to fun. the games mainly because I was curious what, like, the legacy of it was, so I played the Tom Folk games, like Pico School and stuff. And there there were some good things, like Super Flash Bros made some good games, and some other people made group decent... X? Group X? No, there were so many fucking groups on Newgrounds. No, Holy you shit. Would remember specifically Group X, like, hmm. uh... They did the stick figure band thing. Stick figure band? Like, one of their songs was. Do, 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 don't touch that. Oh, wait, was that 55? Yeah, Schwifty Yeah, I, I remember that uh, one. Hey man, check it out, I just got a new Super Mario game. Got a chunk is for $10. Then, you know, like, peanuts, choo choo, peanuts, choo choo. What that right. one? What that one? Like fucking, I showed that to Maddie, and she just kind of looked at me and was like, "Don't play that again." <laughs> <laughs> like she just did not like it. That was a very, it was a very specific type of humor. Not necessarily a good type of humor, but you know what? It, it was an era, a very, it, and it had its own identity at least, which says something, I think. What's really funny is if you go and look back at that, it's so fucking, like, 
crazy how horrible the audio was. Yeah. Uh, we well, that's hear. the thing is even even if they had decent audio equipment, which they did not, they had the shittiest fucking desktop mics that they could fucking get for a birthday or something. Because, like, it was all fucking, like, kids and stuff. But, um, yeah. but even then, like, running it through Flash, especially early Flash, like, the it compressed it down to hell. So they just sound yeah. like utter garbage. Yeah. I'm like... Oh, God, there was another... Do you remember the fucking Llama song? I think I've seen it here and there since. Like, I've seen it on YouTube in like a 10 hour compilation loop of it. Uh, this like, llama llama cheesecake, llama llama green potato, llama 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 taste, llama 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 da. Like, that fucking song. Nope, I don't know that one. I was once a treehouse, I lived in a cake, but I never saw the way the orange lay the ray. I was, er, I was only three years dead, and it tells its tales. Now listen to the little child through the safety rail. Like, it was the most. That shit, like, kids song ever. Right. And, like, you could tell it was supposed to be some kind of a kids song. And whoever wrote it thought that, like, just random men kids. Oh, yeah, they thought they were gonna be, like, what Baby Shark is now. Yeah, and so. I don't know if. Not realizing that, like, Weeble was, like, the guy. That, that would make, like, kid-appropriate music that was actually, like, catchy and would resonate. Oh my god, it was so fucking great. You know what fucked me up? Hmm. When I found out that the hamster dance music is just the fucking intro from the Disney's yep, Robin Hood. Yep, it's just the, it's just, uh, the whistling. But just sped up, and then it has a has an, a real techno accompaniment. You know what the best song from Robin Hood is? Ooh, which one? Every time has its ups and downs Sometimes ups Outnumber the downs But not in naughty I want to thank you all for I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in today. I have have Andrew sing us all out here as as we end the stream for tonight. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for following. If you have not, please consider it. It is free and it would help out a lot. Check out all the different social medias underneath on the browser version, and check out my past streams. Andrew, please serenade us. Uh, every town has its ups and downs, sometimes ups, outnumber the downs, but not in Nottingham. I'm inclined to believe if we were so down, we'd up and leave. We'd up and fly with wings for flying. Can't you see the tears we're crying? Can't there be some happiness for me? Not in Nottingham. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Andrew.